Welcome to the South Florida Hospital News CEO video series. During the next few months, we'll be conducting interviews with hospital and healthcare professionals throughout the South Florida market. Today, we have Joe Stuzinski with Memorial Hospital Pembroke. Joe, thank you for taking the time out of your very busy day. I know it's a busy day over at Pembroke almost every day. So thank you for taking the time out today and visiting with us. Tell us a little bit about uh, your position over at uh, Pembroke. Uh, I am currently the CEO of Memorial Hospital Pembroke. I've been here for almost exactly a year right now. I came in during the heart of the pandemic. So it's really been a baptism by fire to become a CEO. Uh, I've been in pretty much emergency mode since I walked into the building on day one. Tell us a little bit about your family uh, in South Florida. All right, so I am married to my wife, Deneen. Uh, we have four children ranging from ages 24 to uh, 19. Uh, one is going for her master's at FAU and the other three are starting their college journey right now and some getting close to finishing. That's great. Tell us, you know, a lot of people watching this are really want to know kind of how, what it takes to be able to become a CEO of a system or, or progress through an entire system to get where you are today. So tell us a little, start off, let's talk a little bit about your educational background. So my educational background, I have a bachelor's in accounting from John Carroll University, and I have a master's from FAU down here in Florida. Uh, really, uh, I think having a master's is probably baseline degree to be able to become a CEO. Uh, I did mine in business administration, uh, but being an executive for 20 years, I think I got the healthcare part pretty, pretty much more than I could get in an institution just by the day-to-day -day work that I've been doing. Yeah. And your background, I know, taking a little bit of a look at your background, and maybe you can tell us a little bit about your career path you started, but you really started out in the, uh, what I would call the debits and credits of healthcare. Yeah, I started off as a staff accountant at uh, Hollywood Medical Center, which is now Memorial Regional Hospital South when it was owned by Tenant. Mm -hmm. uh, I became the controller of West Boca Medical Center, and then moved on to be the chief financial officer of Coral Gables, uh, then Florida Medical Center, I was lucky enough to get hired by Memorial 16 years ago as the CFO of Memorial Hospital Pembroke, where I spent my first 10 years with Memorial. Then I moved over to the rehab hospital, Memorial Regional Hospital South for five years. Uh, did a little more than just the Bean County. I got into some of the operational departments like food and nutrition, dietary. I was also over a couple of clinical departments with the lab and radiology. So kind of a broad base of no longer just counting doing the debits and credits, but really getting into the operations of the hospital. Uh, so tell us some of the, the, some of the major challenges that you had during your, during your career, starting from your career to where you are today. Well, I would say a lot of it is just the changes that have gone on in healthcare for the last 25 years. Um, you know, this industry has probably changed more during that time with the HMOs coming on board, Medicare getting more involved, uh, working on the for-profit side, I think is, uh, is a real challenge just from the fact that you're looking at how do I improve stockholders equity while treating somebody's illness. It's the two sometimes uh, are opposed to each other. It's really balancing that line between how do I treat the patient and make sure we have the right finances to be able to move forward. And it is a very thin line and a delicate balancing act throughout the time. So during the past year, we kind of touched on early when you, when you started your career in the middle of a pandemic, as CEO at a hospital, I think, which is also interesting. But what have you learned or what have the system, your hospital learned, uh, maybe a couple of lessons during the, during the operation, during the pandemic that you feel are mo now becoming more of a way to do business on a day-to-day -day, uh, -day basis? I think one of the biggest lessons learned is always be prepared for what you don't see. One of the things that was very beneficial for the Memorial Healthcare System is we had stockpiled PPE back when H1N1 first came out. And as we bought replacements, we would take it out of the stockpile and bring it back. So that really helped us through the first wave of the pandemic when PPE became very difficult to get. The fact that we had a stockpile and then we're able to replenish that really kept us going. Uh, the other thing is really being flexible. You know, the rules from, from this disease changed on a daily basis. It came from the CDC, the WHO, even what our system was doing, what we said today 
completely changed tomorrow. First, there was no mask, then there's a mask and, and the confusion of what was going on and how to be flexible and, and really pivot on a dime. What have you found in, in continuing that kind of train of thought? What have you learned about employees during this pandemic uh, and, and, and their relationship to the healthcare system? Well, I think what I learned a lot about is, you know, having a strong manager who can take care of their employees became a very key part of this. You know, we had some very tough units uh, and management was really the key to holding that unit together and keeping the employees engaged and keeping them informed about what we're doing for their safety. From an employee standpoint, let me switch gears again, the same kind of topic. What about technology? What have you learned through uh, technology, you know, whether it be telehealth, you not having to go into the room as often and the technology used to be able to make that happen. Did you see a big change that some things that you could improve operations today learn through the pandemic with technology? Yeah, we actually put iPads up in our COVID units to where the physicians could talk to the patient and the nurse from a remote location. So if the, if the doctor was in their office and something was going on, they were able to communicate with the patient from the office. The nurse would go in. The nurse could also com communicate with the patient through the iPad if there was a quick question so we could keep the nurses away from uh, going into the uh, room all the time. And they were able to take care of a lot of things where a call bell would go off and they'd have to go answer it. So they were able to get a lot more done a lot quicker than having to respond and, and that they still did have that face-to-face -face with the iPad. During, during your travels in the, or journey, again, through, through healthcare, could you kind of give us a little bit of background on mentors? Everybody's had mentors, uh, whether they be personal mentors, business mentors, uh, during your travels. Can you name maybe one or two, not necessarily even name, but at what circumstance that really led you to where you are today? Well, I would say one of them would be when I first became the CFO of Coral Gables, I had an interview with Don Steigman, who was the uh, regional VP of tenant. And after the interview, he sat me down and said, okay, you've got the job. We're going to make you the offer, but here's what you need to do. You need to be my chief compliance officer. You need to be the eyes and the ears of the building. You need to make sure they're going to put pressure on you to bump earnings. You're going to get pressure to see certain things. You've got to fight against that pressure. You've got to be the one that's going to stand up against all the things we're going to do. You need to be able to wake up every morning and look yourself in the mirror and know you did the right thing, and you're going to have a long, successful career. Don had a big influence on just making sure I was doing the right thing at the right time all the time. What one piece of advice would you give somebody who is either a graduate, undergraduate, looking to say, should I start this, this long road into uh, becoming a CEO, COO, CFO, CNO of a hospital? Really make sure your heart is in it. This business is really about, you know, putting your heart and your mind together. It, it's not about how much money you're going to make. It's about you've got to care about other people and their well-being. If that's not in your nature, then this is probably not the business for you. So what keeps you up at night, Joe? I mean, uh, I know people get a good night's sleep. I'm not saying that, but there have to be some sleepless nights when you're sitting there and you're saying, oh, yeah, what about this? And what about that? Especially during the pandemic. Uh, so what kept you up at night? I think, you know, the constant change, especially during this pandemic, and as we're moving and at night, did we make the right decision? You know, are we moving in the right direction to make sure we're taking care of the patient? and our employees and our physicians. You know, are we keeping everybody as safe as we possibly can and doing the right things for everybody in the community? Not necessarily just this hospital, but you know, we're focused on the community because we need to keep them healthy so they're not overrunning the buildings. And then as the census got to the size it was, is going, do we have enough caregivers to take care of the census going on in all of Memorial and in all the buildings in South Florida, it became uh, mission critical on going, it's probably some of the shortest staffing I've ever seen in my yeah. healthcare career and taking care of some of the sickest patients I've ever seen. Right. So that, that, that was tough. Joe, I, I want to thank you again for your time uh, and your support of South Florida Hospital News and memorial support of the community in and around uh, South Broward County.
uh, again, thank you. And uh, we will be back uh, again, probably in about a week or so, you see a new video. Uh, and uh, again, thank you for being part of South Florida Hospital News CEO interview process. Thank you.